Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink. It is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Something you may not be using in patch 3.22, but that you should probably investigate is the loyalty tattoos. These look like they're minion related when you mouse over them or you look at their description out of game and don't go into all the details. And so it's easy to dismiss them and think, I'm not a minion build, why do I care about that? However, the triggered summon skills that come from these are not really in line with a minion skill. They're much more in line with the Summon Greater Harbinger of Time effect that is on the Torrent's Reclamation Unique Belt out of Harbinger. That is something that provides a substantial buff to your character while it's active. The bonuses that you get from these default to having 15% uptime. And the way that that's managed is that they have a trigger condition that can only trigger if it's been at least 80 seconds since they last triggered, i.e. these do not trigger very often. But when they do trigger, they're active for 12 seconds. Now normally, people are pretty dismissive of effects that have 12 second uptime, 68 second downtime, and for pretty good reason, they're not there when you need them the most. However, the trigger conditions of these tattoos has been thought out in a way that prevents this from being as big a problem as it sounds. So generally speaking, these only trigger if you're in the presence of a unique enemy, and the ones that aren't triggered on the presence of a unique enemy require a unique enemy to do something to you. So in all cases, you need to be fairly close to a unique enemy in order for these to start going off. This means that if you're mapping, unless you're mapping at an extraordinary speed, you're going to have access to this once per map. And unless you encounter one of the things that kind of bricks these, we'll get to those in a second, it's going to be active when you get to the map boss. Now, of course, we do need to talk about the opportunity cost of using these. No power in Path of Exile is free. Everything comes at the expense of something else. Loyalty tattoos come at the expense of each other. If you equip one of these, you can't equip any of the others. So you'll need to keep that in mind. You're picking one of 10 options. You're not picking all 10 of them. Additionally, these come at the expense of a 10 attribute node. 10 attribute nodes are among some of the weaker nodes on the passive tree in Path of Exile, but they do give you something that you need to get somewhere. You've got to get those stats as boring as they are in order to be able to equip all your gems. So you'll need to keep that in mind. Don't give up something huge in order to fit, say, more dexterity on your ring in order to use one of these, if instead the best option is just not to use the loyalty tattoo. Finally, of course, the other opportunity cost is that you can't use a different tattoo in that slot. You'll need to balance all of that, but I think in many cases it is worth your while using at least one of these loyalty tattoos on pretty much almost every build. There'll be the odd exception, but generally they're much more powerful than their opportunity cost would make you believe. So what things are there that really brick these? There are a few unique enemies that you can encounter inside maps that are not something that you really want these to go off against. And the most prevalent ones are Rogue Exiles, Tormented Spirits, and Portals in Elder Guardian occupied maps. All of these are unique enemies. All of them are pretty disappointing to encounter when you've got one of these loyalty tattoos because they're likely to result in your loyalty tattoo going off when you don't want it to, and then not being available when you get to the boss inside 80 seconds from that encounter. So all of those encounters are pretty disappointing. But otherwise, let's have a look at some of the benefits that you can get from these, starting with the loyalty tattoo of Etula. Now this one's trigger condition is you taking a savage hit from a unique enemy. This is a hit that reduces your life by 15% or more. This is something that's going to happen a lot because generally speaking, there's not very many unique enemies in the game that kill you without you suffering at least one savage hit in there. Now unique enemies can sometimes kill you in one hit, and if that happens, obviously this is not going to do anything. This is not going to be useful, for instance, if you're fighting the map boss of the Spider Forest map and she corpse explodes her big minion and that hits you and kills you outright. But most of the time that you die to a map boss, it's not because you're being killed in one hit, it's because you take a string of savage hits in rapid succession. If that happens, the loyalty tattoo of a Cula will proc after the first savage hit and then for the next 12 seconds, 25% of your leech is going to be instant. Now that's 25% of your leech by default, but you can scale this up to 30%, 35%, 40% or even more by having a large number of Katava tribe tattoos allocated on your character as well. That said, I don't think that's particularly important. Once you've got 25% instant leech, that's generally enough. That's going to put you in a situation where during the 12 second period after you take that first savage hit, you are going to be very hard to kill by anything that does not kill you in one hit. That's a benefit of the loyalty tattoo of Atula, and it is one of the stronger ones. Next we have the loyalty tattoo of Tafanuku, which is one of the weaker ones. This one triggers when your energy shield recharge starts when a unique enemy is in your presence, and during this period of the buff, you're going to gain 100 mana regeneration per second. Broadly speaking, I don't think there's much synergy here. In most situations, you don't need more mana recovery while you're bossing than you do when you're fighting trash, and the builds that do need more mana recovery, i.e. trappers, 
generally speaking, have some alternate solution like Eldritch Battery that works better than this loyalty tattoo would. So this one's a bit of a miss in most situations, but definitely give it some thought, it might work for your build. Note that the opportunity cost of trying it out is only that you're losing a small intelligence skill, i.e. a 10 int skill, and so that's not a very big cost that you're paying in order to have that on. The loyalty tattoo of Rakiata is next, and this one is very good in some situations. Now this is something that does not work very well on Tricksters and does not work very well on Dead Eyes. And the reason that I don't recommend it there is that those ascendancies get either Tailwind or one step ahead on the Trickster, which provides a significant source of the same stat that you're getting with the Loyalty Tattoo of Rakiata. And whilst the Loyalty Tattoo of Rakiata does provide a little bit more when it procs, it's not much more, it doesn't stack, and as a result it ends up that you're sort of wasting one of your main ascendancy features as a result of this tattoo procking. That said, it's very powerful when you use it because you have a lot of control over this one. This is not going to accidentally proc when you're fighting a rogue exile because it's only if you inflict a critical strike on a marked unique enemy that this is going to get set off. One caveat of course is that this assumes that you are casting marks deliberately yourself. If you are automatically marking via mark on hit support then you will find that this is going to proc and get wasted on minor unique enemies like those rogue exiles, like those tormented spirits. And you're going to get a 12 second period where your action speed cannot be lowered below 110% of base. And this 110% scales up by an additional 2% for each additional Tassalio tribe tattoo that you've got allocated. So if you're using six other Tassalio tribe tattoos, then this is going to be 122% action speed minimum during this period. So this is going to give you a very strong mitigation against anything that slows your character down. And on top of that, it's also going to be a speed multiplier albeit one that does not stack with Tailwind and does not stack with the Trickster's One Step Ahead node. Very strong option if you are using Mark skills and you are not a Deadeye and you are not a Trickster, and something I would highly recommend trying to fit into your build. The Loyalty Tattoo of Ma'ata is arguably one of the weaker ones. So this grants a buff that gives you 5 flask charges by default every 3 seconds, and you can scale it up by using additional Tafoa Tribe tattoos as well. So that can be 6 every 3 seconds, 7, etc, etc. You need to reach low life while a unique enemy is in your presence. This is only going to proc 4 times during its duration unless you are tremendously increasing the duration of the actual loyalty buff, and I don't think that this is overly strong. It's still going to be better than the default effects of a 10 int node, but I think you could do better by replacing that 10 int node with a different tattoo instead of this one. Kilowava is next, and Kilowava is an interesting one here that only procs when you block damage from a unique enemy. So this means the unique enemy has to hit you, which is going to put you in a dangerous situation, and it's not guaranteed to proc when it goes off. But, this is going to provide you with a tremendous amount of life, mana, and energy shield recovery every time that you block. This is extremely strong on block focus characters, especially if you're running content like the Simulacrum, and you're confident that your character can take down the bosses within 12 seconds of them spawning. Then in that situation, every time Kosis or Omnophobia pops in and says hello, you're going to have a tremendous, tremendous amount of life recovery until you're able to get control of the situation and get rid of the boss. Now we have one of the most powerful procs, but one of the weakest tattoos overall, the loyalty tattoo of Kahu Tuaroa. This is just so unreliable when it goes off. When it does go off, it is an absolutely amazing effect. 10% of your armor applies to non-physical damage that you suffer from hits. The reason that this is so good is that it is applied after your Chaos Resistance, Cold Resistance, Fire Resistance, or Lightning Resistance have already gone and hit into that damage first. So that means that if you take 10,000 fire damage from a hit, then firstly you'll take 75% less if you've got 75 fire resist, it's down to 2500, then you're going to get the benefits of having 10% of your armor defending against that as well. This is way stronger because armor is much better against small and medium hits than it is against large ones. However, this only procs when you take a critical strike from a unique enemy. Now you have basically no agency over when you suffer a critical strike from a unique enemy, and also it's a very dangerous situation to be in. You don't want to deliberately cause yourself to suffer a critical strike from a unique enemy, because that critical strike might individually kill you, or if it doesn't individually kill your character, it can at least put them in a point where they're so low on life that even the extra defense that you get from this loyalty tattoo may not be enough to keep you alive from the next hit. For that reason, I'm not going to recommend using this loyalty tattoo on most characters, even though its proc is incredibly strong. It's just something that for most builds is going to end up being too dangerous in order to get propped. The loyalty tattoo of Calum is the one that I am using personally, and this one is very niche but very, very strong in that narrow niche. 
while a unique enemy is in your presence, if one of your totem dies, then you gain a buff that causes a large percentage of damage taken from hits to be taken from your nearest totem's life instead of from your life. This is incredibly strong because this is not just going to be 15% in most cases. The reason that I say specifically for this one that it's likely to be much more than 15% is because if you're playing with totems, you're likely playing a left side of the passive tree build. If you're playing on the left side of the passive tree and you want to be tanky, you care about being tanky, then you're probably using the red nightmare package that I outlined in an earlier video. I'll put a link to that video on the bottom left corner of your screen in the last 20 seconds of this video. But basically, the package is that you use the red nightmare unique jewel in a specific spot on the left side of the tree and you use 10 tattoos of the Namahu Firewalker. This package will provide you with a tremendous amount of attack block and this is something that you would likely be using on the same builds that might consider using a loyalty tattoo of Kalm. So if you use this entire package, then you're going to be getting 45% of damage redirected to your totems during the period that Kalm pops in to say hello, which will be 12 seconds of basic god mode at the start of various boss fights that you engage in in the game. This is why I think that this is one of the strongest of these tattoos, even though it is extremely narrow and extremely niche. Next we have the loyalty tattoo of Ikahaya, which is the easiest of the whole lot to proc, and all you need to do here is use a travel skill when a unique enemy is in your presence. Once you do that, you're rewarded with 100% increased cooldown recovery rate of travel skills. Arguably this tattoo is at its absolute best, it's most powerful when you're using it on a dedicated Sanctum Runner character, but it's certainly not limited just to that use case, it is really really good in a lot of other situations as well. The cost of a single dexterity passive skill is pretty manageable, and I would suggest that on a lot of builds this is worth your while fitting in if none of the other tattoos work. Almost every character is using a movement skill of some description, and almost every character likes it when they get 100% CDR on that, even if there's only a 15% uptime on that, and especially when that CDR kicks in when you probably need it the most, i.e. when you're in the presence of a uniquely tough enemy. The next one is the loyalty tattoo of Akoya. If you are using Berserk on your build, then this is going to be phenomenal. This is going to give you several extra seconds of Berserk, especially if you are using a whole bunch of additional Tukahama tribe tattoos. But even with just the base 5 rage regeneration per second, this is going to be a big, big, big boost to your character's power, and something I highly recommend that you fit in if your character realistically does hit maximum rage when you're fighting map bosses or when you're fighting heavier bosses than that. And finally we have the loyalty tattoo of Ahuana. This provides a very strong defensive buff again, much like the instant leech one, but at the cost of you needing to do something fairly dangerous in order to proc it. You need to suppress spell damage while a unique enemy is in your presence. It doesn't need to be spell damage from the unique enemy, but it probably will be in practice for most of the time that you're using this. And for the next 12 seconds, an additional 10% of spell damage that you suffer is suppressed. This is incredibly strong. This may be the difference between suffering 47% damage and 37% spell damage, which is like having 27% more EHP against spells. And that's if it's your only Ramako tribe tattoo. If you've got other Ramako tribe tattoos as well, then this is going to get even better, even better, even better. In a lot of ways this is actually deceptively good because the most dangerous things that most bosses do tend to be barrage type spells. A good example of this is the Maven's Cascade of Pain ability. Even the squishiest character will survive one hit from Cascade of Pain, but they might be killed by the third one. However, this has a spell tag and that means that if you suppress the first hit, which you're going to do if you've got 100% suppression, then your suppression is going to be amped up for any mistakes you might happen to make on the second, third, fourth, etc. projectiles. As a result, the loyalty tattoo of Ahuana is incredibly good at giving you a second chance if you make mistakes against any mechanic like that. Of course, it's not going to work against spells that do one devastating hit like the Maven's Memory game, but of course, those are things that you probably want to master the mechanics of rather than relying upon defences against because they are intended as Telegraph one-shots. In short, loyalty tattoos are good. Stop overlooking them, start using one. Most builds can use one of these pretty effectively. And I'll put a link down in the description of this video below to the Path of Exile wiki page, which has a list of all of them so that you can find them and you can think on all of them. Remember, you can only use one of these loyalty tattoos, but they definitely do pull their weight. I'm going to leave it there. May your Valorbs have interesting results.